to the time extent of the service I was using. The third step is basically telling my map to pay attention to this time slider. When the map is paying attention to the time slider, the layers will be updated as you go along with the time slider. So each time I move forward, the map will get a new time extent, and the layers will update themselves. Next, I'd like to show a slightly different example. Not using earthquakes, but using piracy attacks or anti-shipping messages, as the NDA calls them. What you can see here is I have a slider where I can actually move my thumbs and change the time extent of the data I'm being shown. I'm not just playing through it. I can actually change the time window. The time window is very, very, uh, very similar to the spatial extent of the map. As the map is being changed, whether you pan or whether the time slider is changing, the data updates with it automatically. If you look carefully in this map, you'll see that it starts off on the eastern side of the Indian Ocean with a lot of anti-shipping or piracy attacks. But towards the end of the decade, it's all heading over on the west side to Somalia and Yemen. If you want to learn more about the time slider, the best way to go is the resource centers. In this case, I'm looking at the API reference, and we have a list of live samples. There's also links to the documentation, both in desktop and server, which should be very useful to get you started on time. Right. Thank you, Sad. Yeah. Thanks, Bjorn. So, <laughs> so you can see that you now, at 10, you have the power to write a, a client-side application. That application has a map. That application has feature layers. These layers are time-aware. These layers can be edited. Um, and you have all of that power to build these applications powered by these services. Next, we'd like to talk about functionality that we have for delivering imagery uh, to clients. And uh, Rex from the Silverlight and server team is going to demonstrate that functionality to us. Great. Thank you, Son. Working with imagery in ArcGIS 10 has been enhanced with a new geodatabase model called the Mosaic dataset. The Mosaic dataset is designed to optimize management and analysis of large collections of images. In this Silverlight application, I'm working with a Mosaic dataset as an ArcGIS server image service. It contains 350 gigabytes of aerial photo imagery at two-foot resolution from the city of Portland, Oregon. So it's a relatively large amount of data. The dataset itself actually contains a collection of individual rasters. As I zoom in on the map, you can see the image service create a new seamless mosaic image. The rasters are mosaic on the fly by the service. There's no pre-processing required. This is beneficial when working with uh, large collections of imagery that will be updated frequently. Namely, rasters can be updated, modified, um, and, uh, and, and changed uh, in the Mosaic data set underlying the service, and the client can see them immediately. In the upper left-hand corner, I have a set of image properties that I can modify and change. Now, these are properties of the Mosaic image that the image service generates or creates. There's a new image type called JPEG PNG. This enables the image service to decide which is the optimal image format to generate for your request. If you have uh, some level of transparency within your image for the extent that you're displaying, you're going to generate a PNG. That's what we're doing here. Otherwise, you'll generate a JPG, a JPEG. There's also some other parameters here that allow you to change interpolation and compression quality to further optimize the user experience with image services. Note the size of the PNG. If you can see this, it's about 2 meg. If I force the image service to generate a JPEG image, the size is, uh, immediately, um, uh, is immediately changed about 25%, uh, almost uh, 500K. And we can further modify the size of the JPEG by defining a compression quality. So I'm going to ratchet it down uh, to about 20%. A new image is going to be generated. And we can see that, in general, the image quality has remained similar if not the same, and now we're only working with 131 kilobyte uh, image that we have to download from the server. In addition, I'm going to zoom out to an extent here where we can see a, a set of footprints for individual rasters within the image service. I'm going to use a select tool. I'm going to select these rasters within the service. And what we can see here uh, is that I can use uh, the query operation 
to spatially select individual rasters within an image service and display properties about them. So in this case, I happen to be displaying collection date, uh, pixel size, uh, and category. Let's go ahead and take a look at this service that we're consuming in the Servalite API. This image service uh, in services directory, so this image, services, this image service has a set of properties that we can discover via services directory. It also has a set of attributes uh, that we can work with as well. Right? These are part of the Mosaic data set, geodatabase model that we can use to interact with and query and identify properties of uh, images, rasters, within the uh, Mosaic data set. At the very bottom of the page, you can see a set of supported operations. Export image, query, identify, and you can even download individual images. If I click on the query operation, we'll see a standard dialog that we get within the services directory to uh, initiate a query against a service. I'm going to specify uh, an object ID for a raster that's present within our Mosaic data set. I'm going to query it. And I can see when I click on it, I get some information about this individual raster, namely attributes that are associated with it. Um, I can actually get uh, individual uh, raster thumbnails. Uh, I can download the image. Um, so I have the ability to interrogate via the services directory, via the REST API, the contents of my Mosaic data set hosted in an image service. Now I'm going to step over to the REST API uh, help system, the SDK. We're going to take a closer look at the export image operation. As I scroll down the page, there's going to be a couple of new parameters here that I want to highlight. The first one is Mosaic rule. Mosaic rule uh, enables clients to define the uh, selection order or a filter by which individual images or rasters within a Mosaic data set are returned to the client. We can see a, a set of uh, syntax and example operations here that we can utilize. The rendering rule uh, works with a set of predefined raster functions uh, to, di to dynamically change the display of raster data in the Mosaic image. For example, if we click on the raster functions documentation, we can apply a custom aspect, a color map, hill shade, shaded relief. Uh, there are eight supported raster functions at this point uh, that we can apply on the fly using the REST API. Now let's go into ArcMap. And we'll take a brief look at, uh, at, the, at the mosaic data set. In this case, we have a mosaic data set. Uh, within a geodatabase, within our catalog view, within ArcMap. So we can view, we can modify, uh, we can see the, the image, we can also see attributes about uh, the mosaic data set itself. Um, we can generate overviews, uh, similar to pyramid layers. Uh, we can modify these properties. And most importantly, we can publish the mosaic data set to ArcGIS server. And we do that from our desktop product. So there's three things, uh, three things to uh, remember about image services in ArcGIS 10. Number one, fast, dynamic mosaicing of images, no pre-processing required. Number two, there's a rich set of query and display functions and rules that can be applied on the fly. And number three, the mosaic data set. It makes managing large collections of images and hosting them in a service easier and more functional. I encourage you to attend a set of uh, image service sessions uh, this week at the conference to learn more about image service capabilities. Now I want to change focus here and talk a bit more about the Servalite API. We're getting close at this point to releasing a public beta for version 2. In version 2, we're going to support Servalite 4, .NET 4, and integration with Visual Studio 2010. We're also going to be providing a set of components and, and uh, features that enable you to work with the new functionality that we've seen here uh, presented on stage this morning in ArcGIS Server 10. For example, our interactive SDK will have a set of samples that will enable you to work with time-aware services and layers. And we can see a, a time slider here that allows us to work with uh, individual, uh, individual time-aware services. And we'll have an editing section that allows you to interact with and manage your edit sessions, uh, editing over the web, working with the ArcGIS Server 10 feature services. We'll also have a set of samples that show you how to work with some of the other new features and, and enhancements in ArcGIS Server 10, 
uh, that are included with network, uh, geometry, uh, and image services, of course. Last item here I'd like to focus on uh, is uh, we're going to provide some online demos and some application templates that you can download and use to get started quickly creating production-ready Servalite applications. We can see a set of those sample templates here. You can iterate through, select the one that you like, and use it in your application. So during the conference, we'll be hosting a set of Servalite sessions, and I encourage you to attend. I look forward to actually working with you later today and later this week. Thank you very much. Back to you, Sud.